Okay everyone, so here I'm going to show you all how to read your cluster using VAG EEPROM programmer and I've got my own little bench set up here and I'll quickly run through it all. So I'm powered in at the wall here with this adapter and then you see you've got the plugs here and here, grey is not needed. And then I've made like a little loom. So the adapter goes there. There's a whole bunch of color MFA wiring that I need to sort out. And that joins onto there. You've got the K uh, OBD port at the end, which then obviously goes into the computer. Using Windows 7 here, this is VAG EEPROM Programmer V191.19G. Just Google that and you'll be able to find it. It's a free download, easily accessible. All you do is plug it in. Now I've set everything up already, but if you haven't done so, you need to do this one in BCDS. Make sure this is unchecked. Apply, save, etc. Here in VAG EEPROM, you want to go into Options, tick USB. Now, if you're using the blue FT232RL cable, the cheap OBD2 cable, it'll still work. You just have to play around with the comm settings and make them relevant to what your settings are. So going ahead, I'm going to power up the cluster. works as normal here what we do dash read let it do its thing <clears throat> done there's your clusters EEPROM down the bottom obviously you got the model num part number EEPROM chip here, EMO3, you got your EMO ID, oh sorry not the EMO ID, that's your VIN, and then you've got your login, which is, if you preface that with a zero, is your SKC. Here is the VIN, on this model car it seems like there is no sort of VIN specified. I'll show you one, do I have a spare one, yes, I'll plug in with a Mark IV cluster, and you'll see that's populated, and this is immobilizer act adapted. Here you've got the hex data. So this is what we want to look at when changing the coding. It looks confusing, but when you know what to look for, it's not so confusing at all. This is where I start. So I scroll all the way down, click one up, so we're here at line 6F0 and the important data starts around here 0A or 20C where the dots finish so you can see the dots there and there's usually a Q whatever blah 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 so all the important data is in, in this last section here so if you look at it closely you'll see here AUZ7Z0X look at that AUZ7Z0X so that's where you find that um, VIN data. So that needs to change and match. And you match that by looking here. Okay. Further on, you'll see that it kind of repeats. So you just follow that pattern. Um, a little bit further down, <clears throat> looking at the code, follow my mouse, you'll see patterns, 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 patterns. Part of this section is key data. Down here, you'll see if you look down here, there's also key data there. All these Y's is where usually your VIN is. Oh, sorry, that is the emo ID, my mistake. The immobilizer. Down here, C425, 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 C425. If we 
chuck that C425 into a hex arm to decimal converter C425 oops uh, I think I did that wrong <clears throat> Great. So nine six six eight. So the same rule applies here as in the ECU um, immobilizer off section or the, around that area. You'll see that the values are flipped. So you saw before when I had it the other way around, it was not correct. So you just got to flip those values and that translate into the section there. So you just swap that around, simply swap that around from your replacement cluster, chuck it in there. Okay. And then you just follow the rest. Basically what I used to do is I start here, go number by number by number by number by number by number. So when I open up another instance, you'll see what I mean. <clears throat> so I'll open up an S3. Three. Whoops, what am I doing? Go away. Uh, sorry, guys, I'm a little bit lost in my folders. There. So, say I open up an S31, <clears throat> you'll see. Here now that's populated. W A U Z blah blah blah. Down here we scroll all the way down, one up. Now that section is populated. W A U Z etc. Here on this um, S four B five cluster that is not populated, but it relates. So you can see the patterns, and that's what I look for, just the patterns. And I'm pretty sure with any tuner, that's what they're looking for as well, the patterns. And you can see <clears throat> up here again, 6F0. 6F0 on the S3 one. Zooming out, you then see Q1, Q2. So pretend this is the original cluster that you need to um transfer uh, keep your data from and then transfer it into the replacement clusters coding you change the simplest thing to do is just to change everything from where this queue begins all the way down to the end and that's it it takes a little bit of time and you've got to make sure you double check everything otherwise you'll end up with a non-working cluster always back this up first. That is the first step. Once you read, back it up. Oh, where are we going? Here. <clears throat> so Jayden is just a customer of mine and that is pretty much it. So when you're done, you then want to write, obviously write the EEPROM and it'll do its thing. So say we do this, um, haven't changed anything, so I'll just make a little example. So here um, I made a copy, this is from a B5, and you'll see that the values have kind of switched over. <clears throat> so again, so you can see there it says here P. So you would just transfer all that over. Now, normally you wouldn't be able to just um, do this and it doesn't work on the S3 clusters. I don't know why, but for some reason on the B5, it does. So we go, right, just wait. Oops. <clears throat> okay, that's not working because uh, I didn't read it first. So read. Did 
easy. Open up this USA cluster, save changes, no, I already did. Right. So take note, kilometers, 118.063. Yeah. So this is going to change the coding. Emoji poo. Done. Okay, so that's changed. You can see now the background's lit up as well. So that's in the coding, as you can do in VCDS, when you can choose either the needles just being lit up, everything lit up as we have here, or just the background or whatever. So now I'm just gonna change it back. You can see all these values have changed. Part number's changed. Uh, immobilizer ID has changed. SKC has changed. The VIN is still the same. So again, I'll just open the and return it back to what it was. <clears throat> so you can see it doesn't take long. And this is with the Audi clusters. With other clusters, it can take a little bit longer than that to read and write. And now you can see it's back to its original coding. I'm not sure if you can tell, but the background lights don't light up anymore. Needles are not lit. Kilometers back to normal. And it's using that data again. So that should explain it. Um, if you have any more questions, then just PM me or make a message in the um, forum post and I'll be happy to nut it out.